Hi, this is Sarah Swan and I like to do videos to help people and um, today's video is about PTSD, per specifically um, complex PTSD or CPTSD. Um, so basically PTSD is this idea where your body kind of um, has a trauma, right? But complex PTSD means that it's multiple traumas or traumas that happen over time that get repeated over and over again that it kind of becomes part of your programming. Now, um, trauma itself can be in many different forms. So there's big trauma, which I call it capital T trauma, which is one event, like maybe there's a rape, a car accident, something that's absolutely horrifying for you and it's hard for you to deal with emotionally or physically, whatever. Um, a little trauma, um, I call it little T trauma, is basically a small trauma. It seems almost insignificant, but it happens so many times over and over and over again that it becomes a bigger trauma and a bigger problem. This is often seen in this idea of emotional neglect, um, which is actually the absence of what is actually needed. And a lot of times it can be, um, it can be unintentional. Like your, um, for example, with parents and their kids. So maybe um, example is you need to go to school and you are, you have a kid, right? And you need to drop them off at school and they're five years old. One day they don't want to go to school and they're very unhappy. They're crying. They don't want to go to school, but you're worried about being late and you know, they have to go to school. And so you're like, you're fine. You're fine. Let's go to school. And you just bring them anyway. Well, that's being very dismissive. Now, if you do it just once, it doesn't really harm them. But I mean, technically, I mean, I try to be as um, try to be as much understanding as I can with kids, and also like come to their point of view, essentially. But um, if you do this over and over again, you're just missing their actual emotions, and then they learn how I'm feeling is not really how I'm feeling, and so that's basically the whole case of emotional neglect. It can be unintentional. You can also fulfill the kids' physical needs, and um, yeah, they can be fulfilled, but if their emotional needs are not made, like they have to be silent and they don't tell anyone, um, then it can cause a trauma, and it's over time. Also, recognize that trauma doesn't necessarily mean one trauma that's traumatic for another, for one person, may not be traumatic for the other person. So let's say you have a car accident and there's two people in the car. Well, for one person, it becomes a big trauma and it causes PTSD, but for the other person, it may not. Now it has to do with maybe age, has to do with your prior life experiences, your biology. Um, and so what is a trauma is, is not, um, it's based on your own personal perception of it. So for me, I got a divorce uh, three, four years ago and um, a bunch of other things happened at the same time. But for me, it became a huge trauma because it connected with my past and it connected with various events and that were already traumatic. And so it just came out. Um, and, and, but for other people, they might get a divorce and it might cause a little bit of a trauma but it may not be as in depth. Um, and so it just depends on your host um, perspective of it. Um, so another thing to know with trauma is generational trauma. So that's a trauma that's passed down from generation to generation based on how you're treated. So um, the brain, um, the child picks up any programs, unconscious programs from birth to about seven, eight-ish. So whatever the parents are doing and how they're treating the kids and their environment that they're born in, the kids will pick it up and it becomes kind of their program. And so let's say the parents have a bad habit and they're not really paying attention to the children's emotions because maybe their mom didn't pay attention to their emotions and then their mom before. And, and so it becomes a generational trauma. And until someone is able to wake up out of that, and change their habits and actually start to pay attention to their emotions, their kids' emotions, whatever, then it suddenly you can change it. And so that is what is referred to as generational trauma. And so a few notes before I get into actually describing the different PTSD um, triggers. Um, I'm talking about fight or flight, freeze and fawn. Um, before I do that though, I wanna talk a little bit about the brain a little bit more. So, um, 
the brain, again, you have the unconscious programs, which are created from zero to eight. Um, so it's pretty much, like I said, everything in your environment. Um, but the brain is always comparing what is happening in the present day to what happened in the past. So if you had really bad experiences in the past, it's going to come with you in the present because your brain wants to avoid pain. So if something gave you pain, um, you're going to avoid it. You don't want to. Even if the current event, there's just a margin in which it kind of reminds you of the past, but the current event is actually not uh, something that could cause you harm. But because your brain has those previous experiences and this lens to view life from, their perception, all of a sudden the current event becomes a very painful event that, or something that could be very painful and very harmful for you. So you, you kind of react how you might have reacted in the past, even if that current event was actually nothing like it. Um, so it, your brain creates these thoughts, these emotions, these behaviors based on your past experiences, especially if you've had a lot of past experiences. Like with me, I learned not to, how to trust people. Um, and, um, this is what I'm, uh, I'm working on myself. I'm working on uh, connection. I'm working on how to feel belonging, how to trust people, all these issues that um, for me, emotional neglect kind of kind of brought up to the surface, but um, I'm working on it, right? But, um, but before I would go to a friend's group and I would all of a sudden have these thoughts that they're, they're not gonna be friends. They don't wanna be my friend, da 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 da. And so of course I would start making friends, but then I would back away because I just couldn't trust them. But now that I've been working on these programs, which is I think very important to work on yourself, you work on it and then all of a sudden you go to that same event that would have triggered you before and you would have had these thoughts, emotions, behaviors that were based on past perceptions. All of a sudden you go to the same event and you're acting differently. You're speaking differently. You're behaving different. Well, I already said behavior. Um, you're feeling differently. And all of a sudden, these friends, you start making friends with them and you start keeping those friends. And so this is what I mean by the past experiences and how they influence your present. Um, so basically, yeah, that's that's in a nutshell, like what PTSD is, um, at least the way I'm describing it. Um, it's kind of um, because it's um, I'm talking more about like CPTSD, it's kind of like these emotional flashbacks, essentially that cause a filter to go over your present day reality. And so once you become aware of that, then you can start changing it, especially if there's something in your life that you don't like and you keep on repeating over and over again. Well, if you can start recognizing that filter and um, the meaning and the stories that you're giving into it and um, all of a sudden you can start changing it. Um, and I do say that this is really really great work to do um but anyway so um let's go into the actual ptsd and i know this video is probably getting long and i apologize so uh so ptsd so there's four apps i call them the four apps and um it's fight flight freeze fawn i add fawn to it um that's a codependency kind of people pleaser kind of thing so for fight so a lot of times this is about control. Sometimes it's control of others, control of self. For me, it was control of myself. I was um, very striving towards achievement and I had to be perfect. And so every grade that I had in school had to be perfect. I had to always be working. I became kind of this workaholic sort of, um, especially even, even after school, um, always had to be that perfect. So it was kind of like this high control. Sometimes people try to control other people you know, they want, maybe they want something from the other person and they unconsciously try to control them and con control the outcome. That could be considered kind of that fight. Um, it's also, it can be anger. It can be explosiveness. It could be like the type A, the aggressiveness. Um, it can mean, um, it can be bullying. It can be entitlement. Um, and it can also go into the narcissism kind of role. Um, that's in the very negative light. Um, you could actually have physical fighting as well. Um, so that would be fight. It basically means that you're fighting, you're defending yourself. Um, and um, so you have someone that's picking on you, let's say you have a, you know, someone is bullying you and this would look like you 
instead of hiding or running away or um, instead of um, fawning to that person, you would actually fight back and that would be more of the fight. Um, the next one is flight. So I was actually very flighty. Like I didn't even realize how flighty I was because I would also, I would feel trauma. Like for me, it was a lack of belonging. And, and when I felt that kind of fear come up, I would literally leave. Like I would start getting thoughts. I would start getting emotions that I didn't belong. And, um, I would come up with a, a solution of me to leave. And this often meant me traveling. Like for example, I went from Virginia to living in California and I literally flew out to California really fast um, to go to school out there when I was 20. And um, yeah, I was, and I do realize, yes, I do have an adventurous spirit, but I also know it was very flighty because of my emotions that I remember feeling and the thoughts and just the fact that I felt a lack of belonging. And I think I got really scared that um, I would be pushed away and um, not included in their family. I was living with my aunt at the time. And um, I just, and I was basically repeating the past. I was repeating something that happened with my own family. And um, I don't wanna go too much into detail, but, but yeah, so that was very flighty. So um, often running away, fleeing, um, being kind of obsessive even, um, panicky, um, workaholicism kind of fits in there. I know I became a workaholic at time um, because basically what you're doing is you're distracting yourself. Um, so that can be also watching too much TV, playing video games. Um, any of that stuff is okay, you know, but when you watch too much TV and you do it to the excessive, then it becomes kind of like, what am I avoiding? Because basically that's what you're doing when you flee. You're avoiding something. And just like I literally was avoiding that pain that I felt of this lack of belonging, which was a trauma coming up. Um, and if I would have maybe paid attention to the trauma, I might have been able to heal. But I think I was just too young and not ready. Um, and so I became very flighty. I flew. I literally took a plane and flew away. <laughs> like flew. Flew away. Because I just, I didn't want to feel it. And so um, I was avoiding it. Um, which also can be you're avoiding your emotions, your feelings that are coming up. So you become very flighty. Um, the next one is freeze. So freeze is often, I consider this like the hiding kind of stuff too as well. Um, it's like um, almost like being kind of submissive, although that kind of goes into the fawn. But it's this like um, resistance, um, like giving up essentially, not resistance, but giving up. Um, like it's futile, um, yeah, being submissive, um, knowing that nothing's going to come good out of it, so why should I try? Um, it's disassociation, it's, it's kind of like this collapse, this contra contracting, it's contracting, like being kind of constricted, you know, rather than being open. Um, it's hiding. Um, I can tell you a story where when I was 17, I got extremely triggered. And um, I basically, I was so triggered that I think I was doing something I probably did when I was a little girl and I didn't recognize that it was the same pattern repeating until later, but I literally went to go sort of hide. I didn't want to be near anyone. Um, and so I hid, essentially. I mean, it was just kind of, you know, I would hide in my room, essentially. <laughs> um, but it's still technically hiding. Um, so it's isolation. It's being a hermit. It's sometimes you can have people just staring at the wall, like literally they go blank and they stare at the wall. Um, I know I have known, I've heard of people who've done that. I've actually seen someone do that where they're just staring straight ahead. It's like this big disassociation. Um, but the biggest thing I want to say from that is like this idea of giving up and submissiveness. Um, it definitely comes from that one. So the last one is fawn. So, um, I can't remember his name, but there's a, there's a book that really covers this. Um, I actually hope to maybe do some videos about different resources. So if that's helpful, just let me know. Cause I would like to do that. I, I follow so many like mental health people and I think I could definitely share resources for YouTube and give you like, you know, a little synopsis of what they are and different books too as well. So I'd love to do that for you, but, um, <laughs> not to distract, right? 
Um, so Fawn. Fawn is this idea of the people pleaser, the codependent, which I've also really heavily been in my life. Um, this idea of appeasing people. Sometimes I tend to be the type of person, and I'm getting better at this as I heal, but um, I tend to be the type of person I know exactly what they need. Like I'm hyper vigilant towards them and I know exactly what they need. And so I often, if I'm not conscious about my actions, I will just do what they want. I will say what they want. I will become what they want. Um, and so it's like this chameleon almost. But um, as I become more conscious and as I'm healing, I'm like, oh wait, I'm doing that. I don't want to do that. So you have to choose not to do it. Um, so it's this idea, and, and, and it comes with the loss of self too as well. Like if you're people pleasing, you're basically not doing what you want. Remember every time you say yes to them with um, not really considering your own needs, and especially if it hurts your needs, you're saying no to yourself. And that was a big key for me. I'm like, oh, I wanna put myself first. I wanna have more self love. So therefore, oh, I should learn how to say no, um, especially when it hurts me. And that anxiety that comes up, when you say yes and you don't mean to say yes, it's your body speaking to you. So it's like also learning how to speak, you know, hear your body. Um, so it's kind of like words that would be associated would be the idea of a slave, a doormat, um, people kind of abusing you, abusing your power over you because you're doing everything for them. You know, you're in the office and, you know, you're supposed to be, I don't know, this architect. I watched a movie recently that had an architect. And she had an aide who was like, yeah, I'm going to just watch movies all day. And she was like kind of submissive to the aide, allowing her to kind of like do whatever she wanted. And she had to do the aide's work, which is not the way it should work, right? And so this is the idea of um, being submissive. Um, not submissive, but like fawning to the other person, people pleasing. And she was basically people pleasing. Like people come around in her office and be like, hey, make me coffee. And she was like not even supposed to do that. And she went ahead and did it. So again, this is people pleasing, it's fawning, it's codependency, it's taking care of another person over yourself to the excessive. Obviously, we want to care about other people. We want to help them, but we also want to put our needs first. Um, it's our needs and their needs together. And if it hurts our needs, we don't want to do it. Um, and it's like this idea of a victim again. So, um, yeah, so I think that covers covers it. It's like, yeah, the idea of appeasing another um, and neglecting yourself and abandoning yourself at the same time. So this is, um, this is a video that, you know, had the PTSD kind of triggers and it had about the trauma. And I know this is a lot of information and it's kind of long, um, but if you're still here and you found value, um, please like, please subscribe, and please share. I hope to have more videos about mental health. My goal is to eventually become a coach um, using my own experiences. And um, I would actually like to probably help people with emotional neglect because that's literally what I experienced the most and um, that's what I would like to be doing. But for now, I'm also doing videos about COVID, about financial stuff. Um, and if you have any video ideas that you would like done and I'm, I feel confident that I have enough experience with it, I would totally like to do that. Um, and um, yeah, just, just tell me how I can help and make you, yeah, I hope this added value and um, if there's anything, just let me know. And um, thank you.